color guard. Ball out and post the color. like all to welcome you to the rejuvenated North Brookfield's Memorial Day activities. It was a little bit uh, dis discerning to have two years of a hiatus, but we're back and we've amended it and done some other things to it, but at least we're back into it. So thank you all for showing up. At this time, we'd like to have Frank Parter, the DFW chaplain, come forward for an invocation. Please remove your hats. Thank you, Jim. Uncover. Heavenly Father, today we remember and pay tribute to the men and women of our armed services who have died in the defense of our nation from the Revolutionary War to these days in Iraq and Afghanistan. They paid the ultimate sacrifice for the freedoms we hold so dear. In the words of sacred scripture, we hear, there is no greater love than this, than to lay down one's life for a friend. It is only by your grace and the love you have for us and this nation that gave them the strength to lay down their lives. Beseech you, O Lord, to receive these servants of peace into your loving embrace and grant them eternal peace that surpasses all understanding. We also remember the family members of those great heroes. They too suffer a great and painful sacrifice. Bestow upon them the blessings of your consolation <coughs> and peace. May you ease their sadness as they continue on the road to serenity and peace. To you we offer this prayer, knowing you fulfill the heart's desires of those who seek you with noble intention. May, may our prayers for the future and lasting peace be answered to your will and for the good of your sons and daughters. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Peace. Amen. Normally at this time we will be up at the Civil War Memorial, but what we've done now is put these post ceremonies together, and the next step would be to have the reading of the Gettysburg Address, and that is done by the president of the junior class at the North Brookfield High School. So I'd like to introduce you to Thomas O'Brien, who will now read the Gettysburg Address. Seven years ago, our fathers brought forth upon this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are in ra engaged rather, in a civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that this nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this, but in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hollow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it so far. Consecrated it far, rather above our poor 
power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that the government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from this earth. Yeah, it's important that we realize how, how the Civil War had such an impact on us. And, and with the monument up there, we'll be reading 31 names of deceased Civil War veterans that were killed in that war. And that set the whole motion for what we turned out to be as a country, for the freedoms that we represent. It's a phenomenal thing. What was happened too is that at that time, when veterans were coming back from the war, the town bells would be rung in a joyous response to them coming back. And our town bells don't necessarily work, but the congregational bells work. So at that time, hopefully, we'll have the town bells for a little bit of a joyous re uh, rememoration of welcoming back troops. And those of you that have not gone away, those troops that have been deployed, coming back home is a phenomenal feeling. Phenomenal feeling. So hopefully the bells will start ringing. <laughs> Thanks, Steve Arthur, for that. That was well done. Thank you. Now we will get into our speakers. And again, I'm glad to see the people are spread out because we, we still have the COVID with us. There's no doubt about that. And our first speaker today was going to be Reverend Jane Beebe from the Christ Memorial Church right here on the corner. And it was two days ago she called me. She just came back from a trip to the Holy Land and she came down with COVID. So, you know, we're, we're going to miss her, but on the other side of it, I am going to make her give it next year. <laughs> so she, she's not going to get out of this thing. Not going to get out of it. All right, so at that time, what I'd like to do is call up our select person, Jason, if he'd come up and give a few words to represent the, uh, the, uh, the North Brookfield Board of Selectors. Senator Charles Sumner of Massachusetts referred to the Gettysburg Address as a monumental act. He said Lincoln was mistaken that the world will little note or long remember what we say here. <clears throat> Rather, Sumner, Sumner stated, the world noted at once what he said and will never cease to remember it. Sumner went on to say that the battle itself was less important than the speech. What would make Senator Sumner make such a claim? <coughs> We've come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. The emphasis here is on the sacrifice made that our nation conceived, Lincoln said, in 
liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. The most important parts of the speech have to do with remembrance. Lincoln stated that we have four power to add to or detract from the consecration those soldiers performed in their struggle on that battlefield. Lincoln stated that the world can never forget what they did here. He said it's for the living to be dedicated to the great task before us. That task is summed up in the statement that from these honored dead we take in brief devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. That we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and the government of the people by the people for the people shall not perish from the earth. United States 3rd Infantry Regiment is the oldest active duty regiment in the Army, dating back to 1784, making it even older than our Constitution. It is for this reason known as the Old Guard. After World War II, the Old Guard, the Army's oldest unit, was assigned to its most sacred ground, Arlington National Cemetery. Senator Tom Cotton of Arkansas served in the Old Guard and was responsible for the care of the cemetery. He said about his role there, we honor our fallen for them, of course, but also for us, the living. Their stories of heroism, of sacrifice, and of patriotism remind us of what is best in ourselves, and they teach us, and they teach our children what is best in America. That description reflects Lincoln's ideas about being increasingly devoted to the causes that those soldiers and the ones that followed throughout the ages fought and died for. In the 1940s, many historians were concerned about a lack of emphasis on US history in schools and even colleges. They were concerned that even the soldiers wouldn't know what they were fighting for. Whether it was liberty during the revolution, freedom and unity during the Civil War, or against totalitarianism and oppression in World War I, fascism in World War II, communism and the spread of communism in Korea and Vietnam, or more recently, oppression and terrorism. Today, as we've become more global in worldview, we're losing affection for our own national identity. Less and less emphasis is placed on what is best in America forgetting what makes us exceptional. I was speaking with a soldier a while ago. He's a Vietnam veteran and has marched in all but three parades since the war. He voiced his concern that as our own old guards numbers dwindle due to the passing years and their names are added to the lists, we read here, less and less young soldiers are marching. Less young soldiers are standing for the fallen. This isn't necessarily any fault of theirs, but ours as a nation. As we lose our national identity and lose pride and affection in our country, our people will know less and less of the freedoms and values that our fighting men and women fought and died for. I would like to personally thank all the servicemen and women that marched today. And thank you to everyone that came here today to honor our departed heroes and the sacrifice that, made, that they made with their last full measure of devotion. It is up to us to teach and be an example for the coming generations. In closing, let's focus on Lincoln's call. It is rather for us, the living, we here be dedicated to the great task remaining before us, <clears throat> that from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to that cause for which they here gave the last full measure of devotion. That we here highly resolve these dead shall not have died in vain, the nation shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, shall not perish from the earth. Thank you. At this time, we'd like the new commander of the VFW, Joe Jablonski, to come forward. He has a speech that President Reagan gave on what it is to be an American.
is actually just the, the very ending of his speech, in my opinion, probably the most important part, that was said in his 1981 inaugural address. Each one of these markers is a monument to the kind of hero that I spoke of earlier. Their lives ended in places called Bella Wood, the Argonne, Omaha Beach, Salerno, and halfway around the world on Guadalcanal, Tarawa, Porkchop Hill, the Frozen Reservoir, and the hundred rice paddies and jungles of a place called Vietnam. Under one such marker lies a young man, Martin Treptow, who left his job in a small town barber shop in 1917 to go to France with the famed Rainbow Division. There on the Western Front, he was killed trying to take messages between battalions under heavy artillery fire. We're told that on his body was found a diary. Under the flyleaf, under the headline, My Pledge, he had written these words, America must win this war. Therefore, I will work, I will save, I will sacrifice, I will endure, I will fight cheerfully and do my utmost as if the issue of the whole struggle depended on me alone. The crisis we are facing today does not require of us the same sacrifice that Martin Treptow and so many thousands of others were called upon to make. It does require, however, our best effort and our willingness to believe in ourselves and to believe in our capacity to perform great deeds, to believe that together with God's help, we can and we will resolve the problems which now confront us. After all, why shouldn't we believe in that? We are Americans. God bless. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, the trio from the North Brookfield School is going to present some uh, military hymns for us. So please relax while they, they play and, and, and enjoy yourself.
great job. And Eric Blumenthal, is the bandmaster up there, I think he deserves a round of applause. Great job, Eric. Thank you. At this time, we approach probably the most solemn part of our ceremony where we re read the list of deceased veterans. And these are the deceased veterans that have passed from the town of North Brookfield and have, have died, whether in battle, most of them not in, in battle, but have just you know, lived in North Brookfield. And we take great honor in reading their names because they served their country as best as they could. And they came home and raised families and did everything that they could to be good Americans. So, and that's the important part of what we're talking about. So along this line, we will start, and we're gonna start with the, the uh, veterans or the, the, those that deceased from the Civil War Memorial up there. And you know, we, we look at that Civil War Memorial and we see it, but we don't look at it. And there are the list of the names of the veterans that died in the Civil War and they're on there. And I'm gonna start. I'll start with the Civil War Memorial, and after each name, Eric will be doing a drum roll to give honor to that particular person. These names are not in alphabetical order, and it's interesting that they are on the east side and the west side of the monument. And if you look at the monument, when you read here, notice that the, the Civil War soldier is facing north, and the reason the Civil War soldier is facing north is because why? Because the North won the war. The war, the, the, the North preserved the, the federal government for which we have today. I will start now with the reading of the names on the east side of the Civil War Memorial. N.B. Maxwell. Peter Devlin. William Clark. Henry R. Bliss, Joseph C. Fretz, Charles Perry, John A. Hughes, Henry H. Moulton, William F. Hill, Charles H. Ashby, Albert F. Holman, Timothy McCarthy, N. S. Dixon, James Henderson, John W. Gilmore, George L. Sherman. On the west side of the monument, James P. Coolidge, George S. Prouty, Lyman H. Gilbert, Alvern M. Thompson, Lois D. Winslow, Andrew J. Fisher, James A. Knight, Lyman Tucker, Albert F. Potter, William Bates, David S. Moulton, John F. Lamb, Thomas Griffin, J. Henry Jenks, Alonzo E. Pellet. And that concludes the, <coughs> the members for the Civil War. If Frank Barter will come forward now <coughs> and read the World War I veteran. World War I, roll call of deceased veterans. Arthur Blair, Ernest Barry, William Bartley, Joseph Bouchard, George W. Brown, Charles Burns, Willie Coro, Thomas F. Cuddy, Francis J. Daniel, Frank Gendron, William Green, Theodore Hibor, Eddie Hubach, John F. Lyon, George Jones, Daniel Kelly, Robert Kelly,
William J. McCarthy. Albert J. Padu. John McCoy. Frank Min. Charles Norcross. Frank Pawlowski. Stephen Papano. Arthur J. Poulin. Albert H. Prouty. Robert J. Quigley. Francis C. Rooney. Alexander Seaman. Thomas Severance. Henry Tripp. And Joseph Tucker. And that concludes World War I. Alexander, Charles Anderson, Frank Balfunas, Chester Baldiga, Edward Banks, Edward Baronsky, James Bartlett Sr., Francis Barnes, Stephen Barr, Edward Barry, William Benvenuti, Matthew C. Benvenuti, Henry J. Benvenuti, Arthur Baudet, Ernest Baudet, Omer Baudet, Harry Bennett, Ernest Benoit, Ralph Blackmer, Clarence Blake, Everett Bliss, John Borelli, Leo E. Bouchard, Andrew Brown, George Brown, Alfred Brunel, John Brunel, Adrian Brusso, Florence Brusso, Lorraine Brusso, Donald Bullard, Alexander Buda, Lawrence Burke, Clarence Burley, John Fizek, Wallace Fizek, Joseph Fizek, Joseph Cardinale, Alfred Kaplan, Guy B. Carew, Carl Carlson, Earl Carter, James Chaplin, Roger J. Charpentier, Sr., Alfred Sharon, Arthur Sharon, Roland Chartier, George Chafee, Harold Shenevitz, Joseph Chapulis, George Clapp, Arthur Cloutier, Arthur Cluett, Francis Cole, Clinton Cohn, Cornelius Connolly, Dennis Connolly, James Cook. Kim Mason. John Corbeil, Harry Kutcher, Rugine Carroll, George Crawford, Edward Crevier, Henry Crevier, Joseph Crevier, Roy Crevier, William Crevier, Arthur Cummings, Linwood Cummings, Richard Cummings, Waldo Cummings, John Kuski, Albert Cuthbert, Walter Zaha, Alfred David, Raymond Dakota, Edgar Delude, Lawrence Delude. 
Stanley Dudley, Paul Dupre, George Edwards Sr., Leo J. Egan, William Emerson, Michelle Vincent Egan, Stephen Farfar, Harry Feldman, Edward Frageras, Donald Fletcher, Joseph Fontaine, Homer Forbish Jr., Frank Ford, Louis Fountain, Samuel Fulham, Francis Fuller, Herbie Gadbois, James W. Gaffin, Albert Coat, Alfred Galt, Norman Jaguer, Walter G. Jaguer, Ralph Drog, William Guzzi, Henry Graybert, Walter Graybert, Charlotte A. Graybert, Jacob Grace, J. C. Griffith, Jr., Raymond Gustafson, Charles Hack, Walter Hack, Leonard Hall, John Hamilton. Robert Hardy, Josiah M. Hardy, Clara F. Hardy, John L. Harrington, Clifford Hart, Roy Harbender, Henry E. Hatt, John Hazard, Manuel Hallway, Francis Howard, Mortimer J. Howard, Dwight E. Howley, James R. Hewer, Harry A. Huckins, Sr., Ralph W. Igo, John Iris, Fred Jones, George N. Jones, Chester Judicki, Ferdinand Kamazek, Richard Kelly, William Kelly, Herbert W. Kennan, Walter King, Frank Kingsbury, John Kizzel, Philip Klamavit, Vincent Klamavit, Rupert Knight, Charles Kokansky, Francis Kokansky, Joseph Kokansky, Albert Korset, Thaddeus Kolarski, Charles Kowalski, Richard A. Krussell, Harold Labomba, Ernst Lacasse, Edgar LaCroix, Raymond M. Laher, Matthew Lack, Emile Lamont. John C. Lannon, Stanley Larger, Frank Latwis, Alan L. Lees, Frederick Latham, Clifford Ledger, Francis Lee, Robert Lemia, James F. Leonard, Francis Lassard, Henry J. Letourneau, Maurice Letourneau, Homer Lincoln, Jr., Carl Littlefield, Harold Lloyd, Frank Lenz, Joseph Lyons, Jr., Thomas Lyons, William J. Mann, Stanley Mandela,
Wilford Martell. Walter Matasavage. Peter Matasavage. E. Arthur Maynard. Earl Mayo. George McCarthy. William T. McCarthy. Joseph McMahon. Benjamin Melor. Raymond Molesky. Charles Minor. Isidore Minor. Norman Minor. Romeo Minor. Joseph R. Minor. Grover Mitchell. John H. Monahan. Robert Monahan. Amy G. Morin. Alfred P. Morisky. Frederick C. Moulton. Harold A. Moulton, Jr. Eugene J. Masso. Henry Munns. Elmer Narrow. William Nelson, Jr. Wilbur Nickel. Irving Nichols, Jr. Bernice Nichol. Theodore Nichol. George Ostegi. Hervey J. Ostegi. Charles Pulowski. J. Walter Perrin. Henry Peridot. R. Norman Perrin. Raymond Plant. Arthur Polier. Joseph Polier. Omer Polier. Ralph Perkins. Felix Posius. Albert J. Poulin. Clarence H. Prom. Charles Prescott. Gerard Crotro. Robert T. Quigley. Charles Quinn. Donald Racine. John B. Rapp. Andrew Resicu. Raymond H. Roberts. Anthony Rogasevich. Edward Ramaz. Henry Rondeau. John Rooney. Francis Sandman. John J. Sandman. William Sandman. Carlton Vernon Smith, Sr. Raymore, Duncan A. Wright, Jr., Andrew Sierra, George Scott, Sr., Kenneth Sheldon, Francis Short, George Silverstein, Joseph Sladewski, Stanley Sladewski, Walter Sladewski, Walter Suara, Clarence D. Smith, Francis Sokol, Stephen Sokol, Frank Spooner, Kenneth J. Sousa, Roland Stapleton, John Stackow, Norman Stackpole, George Sullivan, James L. Sullivan, Neil Sullivan, Charles Samoka, Benjamin Zerko, Benjamin Tavares, John Tavares, Michael Tishkovich, Lionel Tebow, Harry Thompson, 
Roger L. Thurber. Agnes Toomey. Charles Toomey. Richard Toomey. Philip Trask. John Trulla. Morton Trigg Sr. Bernard Truel. Joseph Truel. Hugh K. Tyre. Charles Barney. Donald Vorst. Stanley Waitina. Walter Wayhill. Bradley Wheaton. Harmon Wheeler. Francis White. Walter Willie. Clyde Wilson. Ernest Wine. Alexander Wisniewski. Frederick Whitty, Lawrence Wood, George Wren, Eugene Wyman, Robert T. Young, Leon Zabeck, Rudolph Zabeck, Michael Zugrovich. And now, Chelsea Karen Matthews will do the Korean conflict memory. Anthony Bartolo. Ronald Bowden. Albert J. Beauregard. Joseph C. Benoit. E. James Benvenuti. Raymond A. Blake. Oliver Boiser. Robert G. Brown. Robert Bruce. Gordon Cavanaugh. John Cernoxis. Arthur J. Sharon Jr. Russell Clapp. Shaler E. Combs. Arthur D. Combs. Joseph Connolly. Jackie Kuhn, Frederick B. Corbett Jr., Owen Cuddy, William Curtis, Wilford H. Dilling, John Doros, Michael Debrino, Paul Sleman, Dennis J. Foley Sr., Paul Horton, Forsenberg, William F. Fulham III, Robert W. Gailey, Henry W. Gifford Jr., Louis B. Grace, Donald E. Greenwood Sr., Donald Broden, William T. Grout Sr., Frederick Hamel, William Gerard, Aza Hebe, Robert Hebe, Mormon E. Hickey, Oren H. Howard, Robert Howe, Anthony Hubach, Thomas Igo Jr., Robert Igo, John J. Ngemi Sr., Ellis Ingram Jr., Clifton Jones, Carol Jones, George Kendall, James M. Kennan, Harry Kennan, Richard E. Kennan Sr., Wallace B. Kennedy, Gerald Lachance, James C. Laird, Robert O. Lane, John J. Lane, Louis E. LaPlante, Jr., Joseph L. Lemire, Roger Latondra, Walter Lewis, Edwin Liz, Raymond Madrazo, 
Richard McComo. George L. McGrail Jr. Francis Minor. Ronald Minor. Raymond Morrison. Arthur A. Morissette. Frank Murphy. Donald J. Murray. Harris Myers. Reedy J. Mueller Jr. Anthony Nichol. George M. Oliveira. George O. Sullivan. John A. O'Toole. Ronald Pompano. Alan R. Parker Sr. Kenneth S. Parker Sr. Patrick Renabu. Philip Rault. Edward Ringard. John Robertson. Lawrence Rutherford. Wayne Rutherford. Norman F. Sampson. Edward Snelling. George St. Tier. Roy Strandberg. Robert Sullivan. Donald A. Tebow. Donnet Tamajan, Crecker Tamajan, Henry Tripp Jr., Thomas Vontras Sr., Robert Ventro, Norman A. Denault, Hubert C. Vincelletti, James J. Warren Jr., Alfred L. Welk Jr., Donald T. Williams. And now for the Vietnam conflict and the Persian Gulf era, Donnie Schmidt. Charles Henry Anderson. Arnold M. Barrow, Sr. Richard Burgard. Myron H. Brown. James R. Buckmaster. Lester Bullock. James Bijek. Edward Lee Cattenbone. Roger J. Charpentier, Jr. Alan D. Cloutier. Daniel E. Darker, Jr. William C. Dufel. Stephen D. Fogarty. Leo A. Gilbert, Jr. Frank Hayden. Charles Gearbor, Sr. Ronald Gray. Richard J. Grenier. John H. Hall. Archer Howard, Stephen A. Chow, Ronald L. Kabowski, Stephen Kern, John C. Krukus, Michael J. Cooley, Bruce Edward Labombard, Douglas LaCroix, Roger Latman, Stanley S. Lazarick, Jr., Hamilton Lincoln, Jr. Dennis P. Lindell. Randall T. Lyons. George C. Mann. David A. Mason. Craig R. Metcalf. Dale Murphy. Joel R. Norton, Sr. William Knight. Dennis P. O'Mara, Richard J. Parker, Paul A. Plotkin, Charles A. Putnam, Frank J. Thiebaud, Peter K. Graymore, Stanley Robbins, Barry S. Sandman, Ronald R. Schofield, Ronald Stackhouse, 
Rosier, Ballancourt, Carl Wade. And now I'll read the uh, Persian Gulf. Glenn Brown, Dylan N. Dupree, James Fulham, Daniel E. Higgins, Wilson A. Jackson, Richard B. McAvoy, Brenda Lee Carlson Miller, Christopher Parker, Ernest J. Sharon, Daniel M. Smith, John Scott St. Cyr. deceased veterans. Yeah, just a, a little admin note on that. If we missed anybody, please see me after, and we'll try to include them when we're looking for there's at least an obituary that shows a, a residence in North Brookfield. And then also, understand, they're not all Smiths and Jones, so we, we did not you know, intentionally mispronounce anybody's name. So please understand that. And on the other thing I'd like to bring up, it took nine of us to read the names, and only Eric Blumenthal did all 500 of them. Firing squad, stand by. Firing squad, render the salute. What will, take, what will take place now is that we have the commanders of the DFW and the American Legion come forward. We'll have a raising and a lowering of the flag. And the reason this is done, we lower the flag in honor of all those that have fought and, and 
died for our country, but we also raise it back up again because the American flag will never, never, ever be taken down and never, ever be unfurled. And at this, at this time, I'd like to have Emily Sampson come forward, please, who will lead us in our national anthem, and all are encouraged, please, to sing the national anthem. This basically concludes our ceremonies. However, I do have some thank yous that I'd like to get out. We start planning this thing back in February, so it's not something that just you know, takes place overnight. First of all, I'd like to thank Eric Clementhal you know, for the great job that the band has done and the music they provided. Not only did he do it here, but he was up at the two cemeteries where we had ceremonies at the cemetery. I'd like to thank the Sons of the American Legion for helping set up all of this thing. They did a great job on that. <laughs> uh, Linda McCarthy and the Lady Auxiliary of the American Legion for the, the reason off all that. I'd like to thank uh, uh, Chief Smith from the Police Department, Lieutenant Daly from the Police Department, and cordoning off our area, obviously with the, with the help of the uh, North Brookfield Fire Department. And Joe's from Holloway, the, uh, the chief of the fire department. We really thank you for, for your efforts and for the event that you showed up with today. Thank you. <laughs> also, like to thank Patrick Chitsky for the uh, EMT service. And we're, we're fortunate that it wasn't overwhelmingly warm today. And it's going to get there, but it wasn't too bad. And so we didn't have anybody. Bless my soul, pass out yet, so, you know, it, we, we didn't need you, thank you. <laughs> and again, I'd also like to thank all those that read the, the names of the deceased veterans. They were well done. And even though uh, we're, we're, we're depleting as far as our color guard, our honor guard, the people that we have to march, mm -hmm. and, and this is one of the reasons why we didn't have a parade, because we just don't have the veterans around anymore to do the marching. Just not there. All right. So, but we uh, we, we thank the color guard and the firing squad for uh, for showing up and doing what they did. And uh, based on that, both commanders for the American Legion and the uh, the VFW, you know, would urge any veterans out there, you know, come join us. Obviously, we're depleting. We need all the help we can get. So it'd be great to have. You. Thank Frank Potter for his historical pers uh, uh, perspective as to you know, leading me. Don't do that, Jim. You're not supposed to do that, Jim. Uh, so I, I appreciate it. Uh, 
It made me feel like right at home. My wife says the same thing. <laughs> I'd also like to thank Holly Kolarski, the veterans agent in town, for all the support that she gave. And then I, I, I'd also like to thank uh, Donnie Smith for, for the efforts that he put forth. You know, when you go out to the cemeteries and see all these American flags by, by the uh, great monsters, his crew did that. That's a phenomenal thing. And again, we need more people to do that. Mark McGrail here. Mark McGrail. Mark, come on down here a minute, please. Mark, come down here. I haven't come down. Obviously, the sound equipment is paramount to what we do here. And I test this thing out, you know, days before, and invariably, it doesn't work. Uh, and so Mark was instrumental in putting all of this, the, the, the sound work together. So Joe Jablonski, please come up here. We have a letter of appreciation for you. Mark McGrail, it is with deep gratitude that this letter of appreciation is issued to Mr. Mark McGrail for his unqualifying support of the North Brookfield Memorial Day events for this day, May 30th, 2022. The two North Brookfield veteran organizations were in the process of reinvigorating the town's Memorial Day celebration after a two-year hiatus caused by COVID-19. Upon investigation, testing of the public audio system, it was noted it was not functioning properly. You were notified of the issue and initiated action to immediately resolve it. Based on your technical expertise, you not only found the issue, but took immediate action to correct the problem. You did this gratuitously, therefore saving both the VFW and American Legion Treasury funds. Due to your thoughtfulness and generosity, the North Brookfield Memorial events will take place and most assuredly be enjoyed by the citizens of North Brookfield. In deep appreciation, we remain Joseph R. Jablonski, Commander, VFW Post 3439. Raymond Dupel, Commander, American Legion Post 41. brought to my attention by um, one of the fellow veterans up here and on behalf of all of us veterans we'd like to thank Tim Foyle for all his hard work that he put forward into this. It's always a good day and we appreciate your hard work Jim. Thank you. You know it's the last statement said that uh, that hopefully the town's folk will enjoy the Memorial Day event. Did you enjoy the event? Yes. Yeah. Thank, Thank you all. That concludes our Memorial Day activity. Go home, rest up, peace be with you.